Hi everyone, this is Ms. Rathaus. I'm an 8th grade English teacher and today I'm going to be reading pages 60 through 67 in Post by Jason Reynolds. Then he started calling out the boys' names. First, the vets. Eric Day, Karan Outlaw, Aaron Holmes, Mikey Farrar, Freddie Hayes, Josh J.J. Jerome, and Chris Myers. You boys better look out for our newbies, Lou Richardson, Sonny Lancaster. And this is when Coach turned to me. And as of yesterday, this kid, Castle Pran, goes. I cut him off before he could even get to the Shaw out. Just call me Ghost. Coach gave me a look. Actually, everybody gave me a look. Probably because I didn't have no shirt on, and my pants were rolled up to my knees, and my belt was yanked so tight that it made the denim bunch up around my waist like beanie pants. But whatever. I was going to tell him that, son, Coach said. Then he turned back to the rest of the team. Lastly, this is your assistant coach, Coach Witt. Coach Witt was the woman with the braids. She also had chubby cheeks, and like I said, she looked too old to be on the team, but she definitely didn't look old enough to be nobody's coach. Then she pulled a whistle from underneath her sweatshirt, so that pretty much meant she was. Give it up for your squad, Coach told us, slapping his hands together. This is going to be a great season. Everybody cheered and clapped for maybe ten seconds before Coach shut it down and told us it was time to get to work. He divided everybody up into whatever their specialty was. Because most of the kids had been running track for, like, forever, Coach knew who was a sprinter, who ran the long stuff, and who ran all that junk in the middle? As far as the newbies were concerned, Sonny was a long runner and Patty ran the in-between. Me and Lou were the sprinters. I never even knew I was a sprinter. So, guess what we were doing for practice? Sprinting. And guess who had just finished sprinting and get, didn't get to take a break? Me? Today is Wednesday, and Mikey, why don't you inform our newbies what sprinters do on Wednesdays, Coach said. Mikey was a vet sprinter, a light-skinned kid with braces and a rock face. The kind of kid you didn't really know, really didn't say much to, because you just assumed he wouldn't say nothing back. Except to Coach, of course. Ladders, Mikey grumbled. That's right, Coach paced back and forth. Four, three, two, one. One, two, three, four. Every time Coach called a number, he slapped his hands together like a cheerleader. Okay, let me explain what Coach was talking about, because I didn't have a clue at first either. All those numbers, the fours and the threes and all that, yeah, add a hundred and on the end, and then add meters at the end of that. So 400 meters, 300 meters, 200 meters, and so on. We had to run those down the ladder to the 100 and then back up to four. I didn't think the day that had started kind of bad, then got good, then got bad, then got better, then got bad again could get worse until Coach told me, Lou, Mikey, and Aaron, the four sprinters on the team, on the boys' side, to get on the line. The four words I was already sick and tired of. The whistle blew and, well, Lou, Mikey, and Aaron blew me away. Back on the line this time for 300. Toasted. Back on the line now for the 200. Roasted. Back on the line for the 100. Dusted. Five minute break, Coach said. Grab some water. He came over to me and put his hand on my shoulder. I was literally folded in half trying to catch my breath. 
My eyes were watering, but I knew better than to cry. I ain't no crybaby, especially not over no running. You all right? Coach asked. I couldn't get the words out. Every time I tried to speak, the sound was shoved back into my throat like a sharp inhale. So I just nodded. Then Coach squeezed my shoulder and, remind, and pulled me up so that I was standing straight. Remember what I told you, stand tall. I put my hands on my head, wove my fingers together. Now, hustle up and get some water. You only got three minutes. Here's the other thing that I didn't really know about being on a team. There are rules to drinking water. I mean, I guess it might be different on different kinds of teams, but on this team, everybody had their own water bottle that they had brought with them. So when I went over to the bench with the other sprinters, I just sat down. Didn't ask nobody for a swig or nothing. I don't know. It just didn't seem like something I should do. The only feel I had for these guys was that Lou was cocky, and Mikey seemed way too serious to share, and Aaron, well, I couldn't get a read on him yet. So I figured the three minutes to catch my breath was just as good as water. It would have to be. Where's your water, newbie? Aaron asked, looking down the row. I forgot it, I replied, the fire in my chest finally cooling down. Here, Aaron held out his bottle. Take some, and don't put it on your mouth, either. Lou leaned back so I could grab Aaron's bottle. I held it above my head and squeezed the bottle until the water shot through the nozzle like a jet stream splashing me in the face, some even getting in my nose. Eventually, I hit the target, my mouth, which was when I realized I was wrong. Water was way better than just catching your breath. Way, way better. <laughs> After I handed the bottle back to Aaron, Lou finally had something to say. Yo, what you doing here? He asked. The way he said it made it seem like the words had been bubbling up inside of him. What you mean, I replied. I'm doing the same thing you. Doing. Running. Lou looked at me like I was speaking a different language. Oh, is that what you call it? He jabbed. I mean, yesterday you were all big and bad, and today you just bad. Plus, we all had to try out to prove we belonged here. You just walk on our back like you one of us? Lou was giving me a stink-eyed stare, and I was looking to see if Aaron or Mikey agreed with him, but neither of them showed any sign of hate. I got the feeling that Mikey never showed any sign of nothing. Anything. Ever. Dude was a blank slate. I tried to keep my cool, because I was all the way clear on what the punishment was would be if I did something stupid. Plus, he was just talking trash, and... It was just a little bit of trash. He wasn't going to do nothing to me. I knew that for sure. Still, I had to ask. Oh, you mad about yesterday? Is that what this is about? Me proving that you ain't all that fast? I had to add. That you just got on a fancy suit trying to front like you Usain Bolt? It felt good to throw that name out there. Like I really knew what I was talking about. Especially since... I had to pretend like I didn't think Lou's gear was the sweetest I had ever seen. Especially the shoes. Oh man, those shoes. They were bright green and looked like they were specially made just for him. They had to have been helping him run. Ain't nobody trying to be Bolt. I'ma try to be better than Bolt. Plus... At least I got on running clothes. You out here in your daddy's gear pretending to be something you're not. Oh no. I could feel the altercationness creeping up in my chest like a new kind of lightning. The black was on the I really wasn't trying to be a repeat offender of the bully beatdown. Not in the same day. But Lou was begging for it. What you say about my daddy? I asked, 
my head cocked to the side, which was pretty much the universal symbol for watch yourself, homie. I'm just saying, if you can't afford running gear, at least wear pants that fit. And what are those shoes? Sykes? Freebacks? Chill, Mikey said, flat. That's all he said, just chill. Aaron followed up. Yeah, take it out on the track, newbies. Luckily, Coach blew the whistle and called us all back to the starting line. I stood up. Lou stood up. We eyeballed each other for the for a second until Coach barked, Hustle up! Aaron finally pushed me toward the track, and Lou had no clue how lucky he was. It was time to run back up the ladder, starting with the 100. My adrenaline was still pumping from all that trash Lou was talking. I didn't even do nothing to this dude, and he just felt like he could snap on me. Like I was some Trump. Who is he? I thought. What gave him the right to do to just make fun of me for no reason? Like he was perfect. He's the one God ain't put no color in. He's the one who looked weird. Why didn't I at least get on him? Get on him that. Get him on that. Dang. Why didn't I at least get him on that? Stupid. But that's okay. Because when Coach blew that whistle, I kept up with Lou on the 100. Matter of fact, I might have even beat him. On the 2, I did okay. But it was on the 3 where the day got even worse. I was wiped, but there was nothing that was going to make me quit. Not after all that trash talk. Plus, I could tell Lou was tired, too. He was panting even harder than I was, and he wasn't even here for the pre-workout workout. Coach even had to tell him to stop bending over, which made me feel good. to know I wasn't the only one who felt like I was dying. But when the whistle blew... And we started running. What I didn't know was that one of my shoes had come untied. By the time I realized one lace was flapping around, we were halfway through the sprint, and I was just still keeping up with Lou. And there was nothing that was going to get me to stop from to stop me from beating him. So I pushed on. We rounded the bend. Lou leaning into it, which honestly I thought was kind of cool. And then we hit the straightaway. I had my elbows tucked in and everything but my shoestrings. They apparently hated me. I stepped on one, I guess. I mean, who really knows how anyone trips over shoestrings? They're just strings. How can you trip over a string? I don't know, but I did, and it was 